you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. This, the first two verses are the, they were my dad's favorite verses of Scripture. And uh, I can, and when, as we read them, you're going to understand why. Isaiah chapter 43 and uh, verse number 1. But now says the Lord, or but now thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel? Everybody say, fear not. For I have redeemed you, I have called you by my name, or by your name, you are mine. Here's the promise connected. When you pass through the waters, he says, I'm going to be right there with you. When you go through the rivers, they won't overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you're not going to be burned nor will the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for ransom, for your ransom, Ethiopia, and Seba for your place. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored, and I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. And here, verse 5, even that first sentence, Fear not, for I am with you. Huh. Amen. That that is, I know it's a, that's a verse of that's a setting of scripture uh, that was penned oh some several hundreds of hundreds or maybe thousands of years ago, but no matter how ancient the writing may be, it is still as in effect today as it was when it first was written. Amen. That assurance and that promise still is in place today. I know this morning I. I, I Realize from a congregation, no matter how big the congregation is, no matter, no matter how small the congregation, every one of us are facing our challenges, we're facing our situations. We kind of talked about a little bit this morning that you know we, we're hoping, we're believing, we're trusting. But again, when you're when you're the one facing it, it is sometimes can be a struggle, it can be difficult to say the least. But I'm just here again today just to remind you just to reassure you once again that you've got a God that's bigger than anything you're facing. Amen. I want to preach for just a few moments this morning. Amen. He is going to pull you through. Amen. Praise God. If you believe that today, why don't you put your hands together? Why don't you lift up your voice one more time? Lord, we thank you today. God, we declare by the authority of your word and by the power of your name that, God, you're going to see us through. You're going to pull us through it, God. We're going to get to the other side. And for that, Lord, we are thankful and we give you honor today. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated this morning. I think we all will understand that, amen, there is certainly a, an opposer. Uh, to, to what we are wanting to accomplish. There is an adversary, amen, that there is a, there is a source of resistance. Uh, I don't know if you were, when I was a kid, when I was in grade school, we had what we called field day. It was towards the end of the year. It was always an all-day event. You had the, the softball throw. You had different events. One of those was tug of war, amen, tug of war. It's one of the most ancient games known to man. Uh, there's evidence that the game of tug of war was played across the ancient world, including uh, ancient Greece, Egypt, and China. Also known as rope pulling, tugging war, and war of tug, just in case you was wondering. It remains a popular uh, sport today. It puts or pits together the Two, uh, uh, the strengths of two teams against uh, each other. It's practiced in some form in almost every country in the world. There is a tug of war this morning taking place in each of our lives today. Amen. The enemy, the adversary, Beelzebub as he's known, uh, he, is, he is pulling one direction, amen, and uh, the, the, the God, our Savior, amen, the one that we're depending on, he is pulling the other. Now, again, between those two, there's not even, it's not even uh, close at all. God is greater uh, than any adversary, we know that. But there is a role that you and I play in this tug of war that will determine the result. Each tug of war team consists of eight members, 
all of whom on that team cooperate to, to pull the rope together. Now the last person, the last person in the, of the eight that's at the end of the rope, usually that person is bigger than all the other persons. Now, when I was a kid, I wasn't the big kid. I was always towards the front. I was the one that fell in the water if we lost. But as I have grown up, I would be moving my way towards the back. And I would probably fit more as the what's known as the anchor of the team. It would be the one. I, I, I mentioned a few weeks ago about, a, about the bully that stole my Q-Bird eraser. Johnny Glaghorn was our anchor in tug of war. He was about 15 years old in first grade, and so that's why. I'm praying about that bitterness to get out of me, but anyway, amen. But that anchor, he, he would be the last person in, the, in that group. And, and not only would he, would he hold the rope, but the anchor would oftentimes would wrap the rope around him and he would position himself, sometimes would, would sit on the ground. He was making up his mind that it's going to take a lot to, to move me. Amen. That anchor. I'm here to declare to you this morning that we in this, in this challenge of tug of rope that we find ourselves in, we have a great anchor. Amen. That anchor is not moving. He's not going anywhere. He Hebrews tells us uh, that this hope uh, that we have uh, as an anchor of the soul uh, is both sure and steadfast. Uh, I'm telling you, friend, it's an anchor. Uh, one translation says this anchor uh, is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. I may not be able to hold it all together, but I've got an anchor who's holding me together. I've got an anchor today that's not giving up any ground. He's holding stead fast. I'm thankful this morning that this anchor is not attached to the circumstances of our situation, but rather he is connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the adversary of our souls. He may be pushing, but I'm here today to declare to you that you've got a God who is pulling for you, and God's pull is greater than the enemy's push. The enemy wants to push you all around, but you've got an anchor today that'll help you stand your ground. Hallelujah. Amen. The winds of adversity, they are blowing all around us. We see it, we sense it, we're experiencing it. The waves of opposition, they are crashing into our lives, but we are not overwhelmed because we have an anchor. We have something that is not, not just that we can hold on to it, but it is holding on to us. It's holding, I'm telling you, friend, amen. I don't, I don't wish for trouble, and I'm not looking for more adversity but if it comes or when it comes I know that I'm going to be able to stand amen and be able to withstand the evil day because of the strength and the power of this anchor 1 John 4 and 4, it reminds us that because who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. The adversary, he may look intimidating at time. It may seem as if he's got the upper hand, but I'm telling you, amen, they, they, they don't have an anchor like we've got an anchor. And rather than me telling God how big the anchor is on the other side, why don't we go ahead and tell the other side how big and wonderful our anchor is today. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's going to pull you through. I'm not here this morning to compare my problems with yours. We've all got them. Uh, I, I, I could, if I were to discuss with you this morning, I may say, you know what, I'm going to keep my problems and you go with your problems. But there may be some people that say, you know what? Why don't we trade? I mean, it all, it all, there's a diversity. But the reality is, I've got my problems, you've got yours. 
And how I choose to handle and how I choose to respond is so, so important. Things happen that's not fair. Things happen that I don't deserve. There are things that I've went through uh, that there's no rhyme or reason for it. It's just life. Uh, for whatever reason, it did it. And life can be cruel at times. Now, th those of you that know me know I have, a, I, have, I, have some, I have a fear. I have a phobia. One of which that I, I, I don't know. I don't know that I'll ever. The only time I'm going to kick this phobia is when the rapture takes place. I'm not going to care how high I go. But up until that point, anytime I get beyond 10 foot, I've, I've reached my limit. I don't know where it comes from. I'll be honest with you, from a, from a child, it's, it's been kind of embarrassing. I was probably eight years old, and our family was at Elephant Rock. Y'all been to Elephant Rock before? You go to Elephant Rock, to do, you don't go there to look at the rocks. You go there to climb the rocks. I don't have a problem climbing. I have a problem coming down. I climbed on a rock and I hit my, I hit my limit and I, I, I just stopped. I'm sitting on this rock and my brother, who at that time in my life was not kind to me, he was mean. <laughs> He's making fun of me. He's telling me how big of a baby I am and I, I can't help it. I'm just, it, I hit that point and I am, I am paralyzed. It is embarrassing to admit this, that a female park ranger had to come and carry me down from that rock. I ain't proud of it, but that's what fear does to you. I can't help it. I would climb trees in my backyard, and I would go up, and I, I, would, I, I guess I was thinking that today is going to be a different day, but I would get up there, and I would, get, I would paralyze. And eventually, over time, my family would miss me. And my, my, my dad would say, he would start yelling, Jeff, up here, you did it again. Yep. Dad would have to climb up there and he'd have to coach me down. I don't like it. I wish it wasn't so. Hey, Amen. When I, when I met my wife and was wanting to marry her, her, her dad told me if I'm going to do that, I've got to be a hunter and I've got to be a fisherman. Well, I had no problem with that. I, I, I enjoy that. I, my dad was not that at all. And I remember, you know, I didn't know, though, that to deer hunt, you can't do that from the ground, or at least he didn't think you could. And, and he had this idea that the higher you are, the better you are. I didn't agree with that. But the problem is, in deer hunting, you go in the wee hours of the morning when it's pitch black, and he leads me to this stand that he has homemade. He's made it himself. He said, all right, Jeff, just climb on up there. He don't know me real well yet. I said, okay, Brother Lewis. So I start climbing. It's dark. I can't quite see the top yet. But I'm realizing that I'm getting, I'm getting above my limit. And I just stop on the ladder. And he says, well, going up there. I said, well, patience, Brother Lewis, patience. <laughs> I said, I tell you what, why don't you go ahead and go, and I'll, I'll make my way up there. You're afraid of heights? I'm, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little, I got a little bit of fear. Well, I, I was going to prove to him I could do this. I didn't do this. I hunted for four or five hours on the ladder. I was miserable. But I, I did, I stuck it out. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't know why, but I cannot. I, I'm 49 years, 48 years old. I'll, I'll be 40. I'm not there yet. I'm 48 years old. We were at youth convention last week, and, and, there, and it's in a hotel that's hollow in the middle, and you're like a thousand feet in the air, and I still cannot allow my children, who are no longer children, they're grown adults, but if they're going to walk with me, we're going to walk up against the wall. We're not going to walk against the edge. It sounds crazy. It is crazy. But I'm telling you, the fear is real. Where does it come from? I don't know. My dad probably dropped me as a child. That's very possible. Somewhere, though, it's been embedded in me that there's a fear. I have tried to overcome it. I have tried to think I'm going to I'm going to face it. I'm going to but whatever the reason is, it just I'm I'm nervous right now thinking about trying to face that fear. Amen. That's a fear that I I, I can live with it. I can handle it, I guess, to the best hopefully nobody has to carry me off of a rock again, but 
But the point of the matter is we have fears. We have these things that are they're like barriers that we just cannot seem to push through. They're, they're, if, it was, if, it, if that's the only kind of problem I have, I, I'd be doing fine. But there's other things in my life that are challenging. And I'm telling you, it's not because I don't want to do better. It's not because I don't want to get through it. But I just don't know that I have the ability or or, or am able to push through that barrier in my life. Uh, There might be some of us here today that there have been labels attached to your life uh, because uh, maybe it's life has brought things to uh, to you uh, that you didn't ask for, you weren't deserving of. uh, But because of those conditions uh, and those circumstances, uh, certain labels have been placed on you. uh, And and not only are you having to deal uh, with the the fear uh, or the phobia, but you're also having to deal with your peer opinions and critiquing we all been there we know what that's like I promise you I, I, I'm not here because I want to be here I'm not, I'm not facing the things I'm facing because that's what I've chosen. That's what's been given to me. That's what, I, that's what life has, has, has afforded. Now, I will admit there are times we make bad choices and, and that, that causes something. But there's a lot of things we deal with that we didn't ask for, we didn't deserve, but it was just the, kind of the hand we were dealt. And it, it is hard having to deal with those things there are we we have an ability within us uh, that God has created every child uh, amen the ability uh, this desire to survive uh, and in order to survive uh, we find ways in which we're going to cope and sometimes those coping uh, mechanisms uh, are not always really healthy Uh, they help us in the moment uh, but long term they actually set us further back and so we learn that we don't want to go down those roads. We don't, want to, we don't want to do those things because it's really not getting us anywhere. So we decide we're going to face these barriers and we're going to try to get through them. And when we muster up enough faith and enough determination and we go at it amen, headlong, we find ourselves hitting that barrier and bouncing backwards. God, how will I ever get through this? Amen. And then we, we, we and a lot of it's not, not, sometimes your peers can be cruel. Sometimes you can have friends like Job. But most of the time, our biggest critiquing comes from ourselves. Amen. Most of the time, it's the way we talk to ourselves. Is, it gives us and does more damage than it does any, any good. Anybody understand what I'm talking about here today? Amen. And I'm here to, I'm not here to give you a pep talk. I'm not here to, to row you up and say, hey, let's go at it one more time and get through that. I'm here to tell you that you can't get through the barrier on your own. That ought to be a relief. Because that's what we've been trying to do. We've been trying to push. We've been trying to prod. We've been trying to, I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to climb, jump, whatever, uh, dig under, I mean, whatever. And none of it gets us where we really need or desire to be. But I'm here to declare to you uh, that you cannot do it on your own. But you've got an anchor. You've got a God who is able to pull you through that barrier. Amen. Last week we celebrated the, the resurrection of our Savior. And it's a, what a beautiful service. And in that service, I, 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 in, in my message, I, I described the events of that crucifixion day. And, and they were gruesome. And they, they, it was and is difficult to hear that the, 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 the physical turmoil that he willingly put himself into for you and I. Again, it was it was gruesome. It was it was torturous. Uh, it was more than anybody ever deserved or needed to go through. Uh, but all of that reasoning was uh, again in Hebrews says it who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross uh, despising the shame. He did it for you and for me. 
And as, and as torturous as that day was, and, and again, we, we really can't even put it all into words, but to understand that it had a purpose and it, it accomplished what it was meant to accomplish so that you and I today do not need to live in captivity, but he came to preach the acceptable year of the Lord to set, amen, free those who are captive, amen, to heal the broken hearted that is what his intention is and it can be done here today today you can break through that barrier if you allow him to be the anchor of your life is it really that easy can I tell you yes it's really that easy See, that's not the culture that we've been raised in. And I'm not, I'm not speaking ill of, 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 of the past. I'm, I'm talking about our culture in general. Is, it's too good to be true. It's, that's just not possible. But I'm here to declare to you this morning, it is more than just possible. It is, it is evident. It is, it is going to happen. I promise you today. I'm not, I'm not saying this. And in the back of my mind, I'm hoping that God is having a good day today. I'm telling you, I know with a surety that he's having a great day and that he is on his game and that he is able to get a hold of you and help pull you through your trouble. Hallelujah. Micah. Verse 7 or chapter 7, verse 8. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, not if, but when, I'm declaring to you, oh, oh, I'm speaking to the enemy today, I will arise. I am getting back up. You may have knocked me down, and I, I, I may be a little, a little hesitant. I may have a little bit of fear to have to overcome, but I'm telling you, I ain't staying down. You know why? Because I've got an anchor that's going to help pull me back up. I've got an anchor uh, that's going to help me get back up today. I'm getting ready to land here this morning. We speak a lot about Moses. He was a, he's a huge character in Scripture, and, and rightly so. He's the... The, the, ex, the Exodus uh, a leader uh, from, of e, from Israel, from Egypt. Uh, but his beginning was not as, as smooth as you might would think uh, for someone to be so you so, so prevalent in Scripture. But, but it was Moses, uh, really it began with his mother. His mother's name was Jochebed. Jochebed, her, her name means Jehovah glorified. <laughs> See, he was living in a time, he was born into a time of much despair, a lot of difficulty. Matter of fact, he was born with a, with a, a, a sentence on his head, a, a mark on his life. He wasn't supposed to live beyond the day that he was born, but somehow God's hand stepped in the middle of that situation. Amen. And he preserved Moses' life. The Bible tells us in verse 10 that as the child grew, that she brought him to Pharaoh. Pharaoh's daughter. God worked it out where Moses, his mother Jochebed, was able to raise her child or her baby when he was small. And he, she was able to, to put within him the understanding of who he was and where he came from. And when he grew, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. And, and he then became Pharaoh's daughter's son. And she's the one that named him Moses. You know what? Moses... His name, you know what he, it means? It means to draw out, to rescue. If I could put it this way, to pull out. Amen. He didn't realize it at that moment, but his, his stepmother or his adopted mother, however you want to look at it, she gave a very prophetic name to him because it would be he who would be the one helping to draw the people of God out of Egypt. It didn't begin like you would think it would begin. There was, there was adversity. There was turmoil. There was tragedy. 
But the Bible tells us uh, in Hebrews chapter 11 uh, that by faith Moses, when he was born, he was hid three months by his parents uh, because they saw he was a beautiful child. Uh, there was something on him. There was something about him. Uh, and they were not afraid of the king's command. Uh, they weren't afraid of the conditions of the, of the world at that moment uh, to keep them from doing what they knew they should do. Uh, but by faith Moses, when he became of age, he made a decision. Uh, he refused to to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But instead he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. Amen. For just a period of time. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt not fearing the wrath of the king for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. I'm telling you, friend, you may be surrounded by adversity today. You may say, Pastor, if you knew my life today, you would know the trouble. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't comprehend how much trouble and chaos is involved. I'm telling you, no matter how great the chaos or how great the adversity is, God can give you the ability to see through that and see He who is invisible the one that is your anchor the one that's going to pull you through your trouble hallelujah see Jochebed amen as she was nursing her baby boy for those few short moments really unknown to her as she is caring for her child she is tying a rope around his soul. And amen. And that rope was attached to an anchor. That even the riches and the culture of Egypt could not sway Moses when he came to age. I'm telling you, friend. Anybody here got family, got children that are away from God right now? I know it may not look good today. The report's coming back. It's not 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 good, not positive. But I'm telling you, if you were like Jochebed, amen, if you were able, and let me tell you good news. You say, well, Pastor, I, I didn't raise my kids in church. Here's the good news. Amen. We serve a God that's able to restore to you the years. Amen. So in your prayers today, if you'll allow me the, 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 the brevity here to say he's able to go back in time and tie that rope around his soul. I'm telling you, I believe you train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart. I know what the reports today are saying, but I'm telling you, those statistics and those reports, they don't know the anchor of my soul today. There's a rope that is tied that is not moving. It is staying steadfast. Amen. And God is going to do the same for you. He's going to pull you through your trouble. As we stand here today, I want to ask you this morning, you, you know what you're facing. Amen. You know, you know how you've kind of learned to cope and you learn how to go through motions and you've learned those mechanisms to help you get through the day. And I realize there's levels of intensity here that, that some may not be able to relate to, but there's others here today that you know exactly what I'm talking about. And there are moments just like I'm paralyzed and when I'm on a high height and I just can't move, I got to have somebody come and get me. You're there emotionally. Amen. You go through moments where you're just not able to do anything. I'm not here to belittle you for that. Those are real feelings. And you're right. You can't do this on your own. But there is an anchor here today that wants to help you. He wants to pull you through. He wants to make, amen, you able to do what you could not do on your own. Now, God does miracles. I've watched God do it instantly. I've also watched God do it gradually. And the key is, you just got to keep holding on to that anchor. And I promise you, He will fulfill it. He will perform everything He has promised. This morning, I want to I want to invite you around this altar. But please, before before we 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 come and kneel at all, I'm, I'm not by no means I'm not against kneeling at an altar. Okay, don't don't take me wrong. But sometimes when we kneel at the altar, 
it's, I don't know, we, 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 we kind of close everything out. I, I know it sounds kind of crazy. But when it comes to something, what I'm, what, I, what I'm asking for here today, this is more than just, okay, God, I need you, just between you and me, I just need you to do, this is more of a, I got to step out. And it's not so much that I've got to show my peers, but I need, to, I need to let the other side know. Yes. I'm not staying behind this barrier no yes. more. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I am not, I know it's, it, 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 I've been paralyzed in it before, but not today. Today, I'm going to take a step out. Yes. And, and again, this ain't to prove to anyone in this building. This is to show the adversary that I'm not going to stay here any longer. Now, whatever rate I, I'm, re, I'm removed from my barrier, that's up to God, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust Him. But starting today, the role that I'm going to play in this is I'm telling you, I am stepping up today and I'm saying God I'm holding on to this anchor right now is there anybody here you got something in your life you've got a barrier that you just can't seem to get through why don't you make that declaration as you step out and as you do that if you would at least lift up your face lift your head up it'd be okay to lift your hands as well and then begin to declare with your voice that you're going to make it not to Today, devil, it's not happening. I'm no longer there. I'm not staying where I've been, but I'm going to let you, God, have the difference in my life. Come on, church. In the name of Jesus, we worship you, God. We thank you, Jesus. I have this confidence because I've seen the faithfulness of God. 